All right, I've tried to make this video like too many times and people keep calling me, so I'm hoping this one works. <clears throat> Thought I'd make a quick snippet of a video pertaining to my experience as to uh, why I went cold turkey and uh, I didn't go to methadone, suboxone, or anything else. I didn't know about Vivitrol. Um, I'll be honest, when I was going to detox off of dope, shooting heroin, that's where I was at. I had already lost my occupation. I was already homeless. Um, I was going from house to house, you know, from people I knew. And I had no money to my name. So everything I was getting, I was lying, cheating, stealing, just to try and maintain my substance abuse, my active addiction. And the disease would do that. I mean, it, it changes your thought process and, and, uh, and making decisions. You know, we don't have a choice when we're out there actively using. So I made a decision while I was high that I was going to get clean and I was going to do it. Well, you change your mind as you start getting clean that you really don't want to get clean. Or you want to get clean, but you also don't want to go through the pain. You're tired of the way it feels. You're sucking, you're suffering, and you just so badly want to feel better. Well, here's my opinion and experience. So I can only tell you what worked for me. I'm not here to tell anyone else, hey, don't take this or do take this or anything like that at all. I am no expert on those things. I just tell you what happened with me and how I am. So if you can relate to my story, then this might be something that works for you and it might not be something. So don't take it to the bank. And I don't want haters from both sides going, you're telling people, condoning people to go to methadone and suboxone, uh, or you're, you're, not, you're telling people don't do it. Here's my, uh, my personal experience. So you can only take you know, the meat and spit out the bones, what I say here. I've tried the methadone. I tried to quit previously. Uh, I've done this many times over the years, and I've been you know, on and off, whether it be opiate painkillers from Opanas and Oxymorphone, Oxycontin. I was snorting everything I was doing after a while. At first, I started swallowing. Then it started snorting. Then uh, you know, I quit for a long time, was going and working a program, and I stopped giving away what was given to me. For those who work the program, they'll understand the 12th step. And so what happened was I ended up going back to drinking alcohol, though, because I didn't have an alcohol problem. Found out that I am actually a person who is addicted to alcohol, and I can't stop once I start. They call that an alcoholic. So then I ended up going through a bunch of phases there, and I'm not trying to go into my story, but I ended up back on painkillers when I had a tooth pulled. Um, if you watched any of my YouTube videos, you'll see I kind of describe my story a little. Uh, I need to remake another one and kind of tell you my most recent account. There were some miracles that took place. But let me put it this way. I've done methadone, and for me, um, it got me off of dope. So if your initial real purpose is I I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, and I want to quit this crap for good, then you can do this if you actually will be able to do what the counselors are telling you at the methadone clinic or Suboxone, whatever choice you choose. And um, if you're willing to listen to their instruction and you're not trying to make this a permanent thing, but just to maintain so that you can come off. Number one, keep in mind though, if you're like me and you were broke and you had nothing, no money to your name, um, I didn't have a choice to go do methadone or Suboxone. I have three children. I have a wife. Um, which at the time I lost because I was so out there that, that I had gotten kicked out and, uh, I didn't want to go to jail and deal with all that. So I, I, I left and I didn't want to turn back and have that because no one would take my dope from me. I'm not going to be locked up where I can't get a hold of my dope. I got to have my dope. That's where I was at. So with the methadone, I abused the methadone. Even with the counselors down there at the methadone clinic. Oh, I'm not comfortable. Up my dose, five milligrams. Oh, still not comfortable. What's going on? 120, 140, 150 milligrams. And I kept going and I'm nodding and I mean, I'm exhausted. And I'm, and then and then I get this spurt of energy because it's the methadone. You know, the methadone gave me energy after a while throughout the day. And I would be super talkative. And I mean, I was replacing my addiction on dope with methadone. That's me. Some people are utilizing it to actually get off dope. That is a miracle. It's amazing that there's a drug out there that can do this. And I really believe there are some people who have to do this. There are some people who need to go to methadone. I'm telling you what happened to me. Once I got off the initial detox of dope, how do I keep from going back? I was working a program and working that program doing all and anything that I could, going to any lengths to prevent from going back to dope, is what I did. 
Today, I don't need anything. I don't need Suboxone or Methadone. I'm not paying $13, $14 every morning driving somewhere at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning to go get a dose and then maintaining that every day having to find a way to afford it. I hadn't had the occupation, didn't have the money to do so. Some might say, well, you had the money to buy dope. Well, that's because I stole. And if I'm trying to change my way of life, I'm going to actually change everything. I can't be stealing and lying and cheating and, and possibly going to jail over something. So... I had to cold turkey, and I did, and it sucked ass really, really bad. I mean, it was the worst experience I've ever felt, but as I gradually made it through those acute withdrawal stages, it began to get better. Of course, I had many, many nights where I only got two hours of sleep or, you know, I could not sleep at some nights, multiple days in a row, I couldn't sleep. So I tried the Suboxone. And um, I, I, I wasn't doing it the right way, okay? So I would take a Suboxone strip and take a, you know half of a strip or whatnot and then take a half the next day and whatnot. Well, what happened is when I didn't have Suboxone or I couldn't afford to get the Suboxone or whatever reason it would be, I would do dope when I didn't have the Suboxone in me and try to go back to the Suboxone so I wouldn't hurt. Well, don't do that. You're going to withdraw like a mofo if you try and do that because that's the box and put you in an instant withdrawal and it really, really sucks. I mean, I've done that time and time again thinking, oh, the Suboxone will help me from being sick. No, I was kicked in the withdrawal even worse. Um, so that was my experience. My thing is this. If you can make it through the acute withdrawal, the worst part, the beginning part of the withdrawals, and you're able or capable to make meetings and you're willing to go to any links because if I put any chemical in me, methadone, suboxone, dope, alcohol, painkillers, you name it, I'm on the run, bro. I am on a spree. I am gone. That's me. That's not you, maybe. That might be not anyone in this group. I'm just sharing my experience. And my experience is... I have a brother-in-law too. I'll give you an example. My brother-in-law, he stays at a high dose of methadone. The dude is uh, used to that high dose now, but when he was coming over, the guy was nodding. I mean, he was standing up and he looked like he had done a giant shot of dope. And I was like, what the hell? He's got to be on dope. There's no way. No, it was the methadone. The methadone had him in total not out stage, and uh, he had to lower his dose. Eventually, he realized he was doing it, you know, abusing it. And I asked him, I said, why, are, why do you continue to do methadone after three years of being on it? He said he told himself a long time ago, he wants to stay high for the rest of his life because he just, he doesn't want to keep falling back or possibly going forward and whatnot. And he decided that he would do methadone for the rest of his life. So... I thought about that and I was like, man, that's scary. I do not want to be stuck on something for the rest of my life because it's addictive. It is. It's way better than dope. I will say it's way better than dope in many ways. Okay. You're not shooting needles in your arms. You're not buying illegal drugs off the streets. You're not, you know, doing many things a lot of people do. And a lot of people maintain on methadone and do really well with this stuff. They do good. They don't, uh, they don't do, they're, they're good citizens, if you will. And it works for them. That's good. What I'm saying for me is I can't do it and I don't need it now. I got over the worst part. Within 14, 15 days of being off of dope, I didn't need anything but a program and a higher power and people and fellowship to, to talk to and maintain that spiritual condition that I have each day with my higher power. That's what keeps me going. That's what gets me high. If you will, that's my high. And that's exactly what the programs are teaching. We do drugs because we like the way drugs make us feel. They make us feel better than where we feel without them. Um, so that, that spiritual experience you get from drugs, it's like a temporary spiritual experience, is what a drug addict like us has to have in order to stay off from this stuff because that's our solution. Our immediate solution in our brain is, hey, I'll feel better if I just put this drug in me. Well, what I do now is I maintain a spiritual condition and I get a high off of that and that's what keeps me coming back and staying clean. I go to 12-step programs. I go to multiple different 12-step programs and it works. Now, if you're like, I got an occupation. I have to be there for work. I I want to get off dope, but I need to I need to, to be able to, to go to work and stuff. I don't know any way my experience is I don't know how to do that. 
and not take something because I was useless, useless coming off of dope. I was so sick, man. I mean, I should have probably been in a hospital, but um, I made it through. You know, um, I had people there that were that would you know give me water, make sure that if I if I was able to eat, I'd put something in me. But um, anyway, I, I just thought I'd share and let people know in case you're wondering if you ever see me comment. Um, I'm not against methadone. I'm not against Suboxone at all. Some people need it, and that's something that works for them. For me, I'm not trying to switch addictions and go from one thing to another. And and, and affording the methadone or Suboxone, I couldn't. I, I couldn't do it. That was me. And today, I don't need anything. So um, I'm happy. I'm happy, joyous, and free without it. Um, but I'm not pushing people from not going to do that. Because that might be what they really do need. And if they can afford that, then do it. Because that's something that will help save their life from overdosing, shooting up, or whatever. If you're like me, anything you put in you, you're going to abuse. I don't have anything in me today. So I, I thank God. It's by the grace of God that I have that. Thank you guys for letting me share. And I hope I don't stir any trouble. And I'm not trying to be an advocate for either side. I'm just saying it works for some people. It didn't work for me. And... um you know, one day at a time, I just, I go to, I go to meetings and I do the best that I can. Um, by the grace of God today, I'm back in my house. I have my wife, my three children. I have a vehicle, which I might be losing because I can't even afford my bills on that. Um, and I'm trying to find a, a, a permanent job. I'm doing side work here and there, but it's not cutting it. And there was no way I'd have been able to do that coming off of dope. So for those of you who have jobs and you're trying to maintain or you're trying to maintain your life and there's no way you can just cold turkey or go somewhere and do this, there are ways out of there. And I hear that Vivatrol helps. I don't know from experience on that. I just know Sabox and Methadone for me. And uh, it, 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 it works, but it kept me high and it kept me spending money and, and I was abusing it. I wasn't doing it the right way. If you're really going to do things the right way, then that might be a way for you. I couldn't stop. Put some in me, I'm on a roll. That's enough. I'm done repeating myself. So um, I love you guys, everyone. If you're on Suboxone, if you're on Methadone, if you're on Cold Turkey, God bless you. Whatever path you took and whatever path is there, I pray that God is with you and that he continues to move and help you guys every day to stay off the dope and, and ruin in your lives. So thanks for letting me make this little snippet. Have a good one, y'all.